What do you think about the idea of, of uh, panspermia, that the theory that life did not originate on Earth and was planted here from outer space? Or pseudopanspermia, which is like the basic ingredients, the magic that you mentioned was planted here from elsewhere in space? I don't find them helpful. That's not to say they're wrong. Uh, so, so pseudotranspermia, the idea that you know the chemicals, the amino acids, the nucleotides are being delivered from space. Well, we know that happens. It's unequivocal. They're delivered on meteorites, comets, and so on. Um, so what do they do next? That's, to me, the question. Well, what do they do is they stock a soup. They, presumably, they land in a pond or in an ocean or wherever they land. And then you end up with a, you know, a best possible case scenario is you end up with a soup of nucleotides and amino acids. And then you have to say, so now what happens? And the answer is, oh, well, they have to go <laughs> become alive. Mm -hmm. So how did they do that? You may as well say then a miracle happened. Um, I don't believe in soup. Um, I, th I think what we have in event is a continuous conversion, a continuous growth, a continuous reaction, a continuous converting a flow of molecules into m more of yourself, you might say, even if it's a small bit. So you've, you've, got, you've got a kind of continuous self-organization and growth from the very beginning. You well, never have that in a soup. Isn't the entire universe and living organisms in the universe, isn't it just... Uh soup all the way down isn't it all soup? no no i mean soup almost by definition doesn't have a structure but soup is a collection of ingredients that are like randomly yeah but they're not random they're not i mean they're, 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 we have chemistry going on here we have membranes so forming which are which are you know effective oil water on. interactions okay so uh, it feels like there's a direction to a process like a direct there process. are di there are directions to processes yeah uh, and if you are com if you're starting with co2 and you've got two reactive fluids being brought together and they, they react, what are they going to make? Well, they, they make carboxylic acids, which include the fatty acids that make up the cell membranes, and, and they form directly into bilayer membranes. They form like soap bubbles. It's, it's spontaneous organization caused by the nature of the molecules. And, and those things are capable of growing and are capable, in effect, of being selected even before there are genes. We have this. So we have a lot of order, and that order is coming from thermodynamics and the thermodynamics is always about increasing the entropy of the universe but if you have if you have oil and water and they're separating you're increasing the entropy of the universe even though you've got some order which is the soap and the water are not not miscible now to come back to your first question about um panspermia properly um that just pushes the question somewhere else that just even if it's true maybe life did start on earth by panspermia but but so what are the principles that govern the emergence of life on any planet we, we it's an assumption that life started here and it's an assumption that it you know it started in a hydrothermal vent or it started in a terrestrial geothermal system the question is can we work out a testable sequence of events that would lead from one yes. to the other one and then test it and see if there's any truth in it or not with panspermia you can't do any of that but the the fundamental question of panspermia is do we have the machine here on earth to build life it is Not the yet. vents enough it is oxygen and hydrogen and whatever the heck else we want and some source of energy and heat is that enough to build life yes or, or well that's <laughs> <laughs> of course you would say that as a human yeah. Uh, but there could be aliens right now chuckling at that idea. Maybe you need some special, um, special sauce, special uh, elsewhere well, sauce. So yes. Your sense and, is and, and we have everything. I mean, here. this is precisely the the, the question. So I, I, I like to when I'm when I'm talking in schools, I like to start out with the idea of we, we make we can make a time machine. Yes. We go back four billion years. And we go to these environments that people talk about. We go to a deep sea hydrothermal vent. We go to a kind of Yellowstone Park type uh, place environment, and we find some slime that looks like we can we can test it. It's made of organic molecules. It's it's got a structure which is not obviously cells, but you know it's it's is is this a stepping stone on the way to life or not? Yeah. How do we know? Unless we've got an intellectual framework that says this is this is a stepping stone and that's not a step, you know, we'd never know. We wouldn't know which environment to go to, what yes. to look for, how to say this. So all we can ever hope for, because we're never going to build that time machine, is to have an intellectual framework that can explain step by step, experiment by experiment, how we go from a sterile, inorganic planet to living cells as we know them. 
And in that framework, every time you have a choice, it could be this way or it could be that way, or you know, there's lots of possible forks down that road. Um, did it have to be that way? Could it have been the other way? And would that have given you life with very different properties? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so if you if you come up with a, you know, it's a long hypothesis, because as I say, we're going from really simple prebiotic chemistry all the way through to genes and molecular machines. That's a long, long pathway. And nobody in the field would agree on the order in which these things happened, which is not a bad thing, because it means that you have to go out and do some experiments and try and demonstrate that it's possible or not possible.